Something which I never really discuss on this channel is private practice paperwork. And the reason for that is because one of my clients and friends, Tamara Howell, is the queen of private practice paperwork. She has spent loads and loads of time and also put her own finances into creating lawyer approved private practice paperwork for therapists in private practice. She's done all the research. She's been a therapist in private practice for over a decade. And so she definitely knows what she's talking about when it comes to all things paperwork. So to round off my private practice workflow mini video series that I've just done on my channel, which I will link the playlist up here or down below, I thought it'd be a really great idea to get her on the channel and to interview her about private practice paperwork so she can give you all of the details. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kim. I help therapists in private practice get online, get confident with admin and reduce tech overwhelm. But what Tamara has done with her paperwork pack is create beautiful templates for you for all types of paperwork that you would need in your practice. And then you can work through them step by step so that you have a blueprint of your processes and procedures for your practice. All of the links that we discuss in today's interview are going to be linked below. So that's a link to her paperwork. It's also a link to her clinical wheels training and also the free resource that she has for you. So let's get started straight away. Hi Tamara, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me today, Kim. So most people in my audience and watching this video are gonna know who you are, but for those that don't, can you just give a brief introduction to who you are? Sure, my name's Tamara Howell and I'm a UK qualified therapist based in France. And I've been in private practice for about 13 or 14 years now. Um, and I also really love paperwork which is what Kim's going to talk to me about today. It is. So when we first started working together, you had just created the paperwork. And so why did you want to do that? Why did you want to create this paperwork pack? I am a policies and procedures enthusiast, I think. <laughs> um, when I restarted my practice after taking um, leave, after becoming a parent, I decided to overhaul all of my policies and procedures. I think it's quite a nice time after you've had a break from private practice to do a big refresh. So I changed my systems and I did some coaching with people and I learned about different policies that I wanted to implement in my practice. And then what I did was I went through the BACP, British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapy, ethical guidelines sort of line by line and all the documents and leaflets and things that I could find because um, I'm a member of that organization and I rewrote my paperwork to match all of those guidelines to make sure I wasn't missing things um, and through that process it's actually quite an interesting process learning about it because it shapes your private practice and the policies and the way that you want to work um and so that's how i became interested in 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 paperwork and and what it can do for us because of how it protects us in our work so basically what you're saying is if people buy your paperwork you've done all the research for them and then basically all of the things that they need in their paperwork is all there already yeah so it's really interesting because you, like you would think that my marketing would take that approach like i've done it all for you just by mine but the reality is you're still going to have to do some work you're still going to have to make decisions about your um your process your policies like your cancellation policy how you implement chasing up fees things like that you're still going to have to make all of those decisions so even if you buy my templates you're still going to have to do um, editing. And I actually first recommend everybody read your ethical guidelines, write your paperwork. And if you don't want to do that, or it isn't within your like time capacity um, or interest level, then sure, I've got some templates for you. I think it also helps people know, like, because it's kind of like bullet pointed, right? So you have a paragraph, and then they would think about their specific policy for their practice. But if that bullet point wasn't there, they might not have thought about it at all. Yeah, that's true. So when I've done um, paperwork mega sessions, where we go through the contract line by line in a group, 
Um, that's it's really fun. People people sometimes don't think it's going to be fun, but it is really interesting. And we get to hear lots of different people's perspectives. Um, and, and that is true. Like even in the confidentiality section, there's like, you know, certain exceptions. And most people will know one or two of those exceptions, but they won't necessarily think about other ones. Exactly. And that's why I think it's so useful. And people have always enjoyed those paperwork sessions from what I remembered when you did like learn to love online therapy and things like that. There was something that people were like, oh, paperwork. But actually, it was a thing that people spoke about a lot. I think it helps that I'm really enthusiastic about it. And like, you know, I think that it's really interesting. And so a lot of people don't look forward to doing it and kind of like the body doubling of sitting in a call together for three hours going through the contract line by line. But that's always the call. That's always the module that I get the best feedback about. Yeah. So it, why was it important for you to get them lawyer approved? Because I'm assuming you could have created this paperwork and sold it just on what you've done because people can kind of create any kind of digital product and product and sell it so why was it important for you to get them lawyer approved because I know that was a huge financial cost for you to do that yeah it was a big investment at the beginning and there isn't really any sort of technical um reason to do that in the UK because as we know um counseling and psychotherapy isn't regulated yet in in the UK and there isn't any sort of requirement to have legally approved paperwork but I saw my American counterparts doing that and I saw that a lot of my American colleagues that I'm connected with online and I have really good friendships with and I've learned a lot from I saw that they would speak to um attorneys about their paperwork um that they were really like um, really up on their board regulations and and things like that, and I and I really respect that. And I also saw that people who sell paperwork in those countries that are regulated would get um, would get lawyers to approve the paperwork um, in as much as you can, because of course, as soon as you edit it, it becomes your own. Um, but just the framework of it and the majority of it and to make sure that there aren't any mistakes being made. And so I just, I think once I learn about a standard, I just want to meet it, you know, whether it's required of me or not. And I think that once I understood how that protects our clients and how it protects us in private practice, um, it was, you know, it was really easy decision for me even though it was a big investment it was right at the beginning of starting this part of my business supporting therapists um and so i i just put my own money into it you know and and over that couple of years i think i consulted with the lawyers quite frequently and it sort of went from 10,000 to 12,000 to 14,000 and it took me years to pay myself back actually um, but I still think money well spent and part of starting the template shop, private practice paperwork was about just recouping that those lawyers fees because it was like I wanted to do that for me in my private practice. And it was only as an afterthought that a colleague said to me, why don't you sell it to get the lawyers fees back? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that. So in your experience for people, for therapists that are starting out in private practice, what would you say are the essential pieces of paperwork, forms that they should have. So interesting that you call it essentials because when I first started my shop, I used to have three packages. I used to have essentials, foundations, and uh, the complete document suite, I used to call it. And what ended up happening was loads of people would just email me and say, what do you use in your practice? And so I scrapped all of that and just now sell everything individually or Tamara's paperwork pack. Um, because that's everything I use in my practice. Um, but the essentials, what it had in it was a welcome letter. So welcoming people to our practice. Hello, my name is. It's so lovely to, you know, start working together, however you want to say that. Um, and then um, it would be the cover letter for a welcome pack. And the welcome pack for me includes a contact details form, um, which includes collecting doctor's details, next of kin details, um, and, and contact details for the client. Also, the therapy contract. So some people split that out into 
um, an agree a business agreement and um, a ther like a therapy group. Some people split out the business part and the therapy part, but I put it. It's all one big document. The privacy policy, which includes GDPR terms and conditions, as well, um, and contact details. Oh, and a clinical will. So we should all have a clinical will right from the beginning. People often ask me, um, when do we need a clinical will? And it's the answer is before you have your first client, before your first client session is, and, and that's not to shame anyone who hasn't done it yet, because I know it takes time and it's a work in progress. For many of us, we have to revisit it um, often, um, but just for anyone who's hanging on, not sure if they need one yet, we definitely need one from the start. And you also have a clinical wills training, don't you? I do. So you have, so what is that? That's a video lesson and also the document. Yes, exactly. And there's also a checklist and a workbook and there's like something in it for everyone. Cool. However you learn, there's something in there for you. So I'll leave a link to that specific training as well at the work in the description. So what would you say are common mistakes or oversights that you see therapists in private practice make with their paperwork? Um, sometimes we don't understand everything that we might need and that's okay because when the issue comes up we can then go and create it, we can look for it, we can ask our peers for support with it. So this quite often comes up with things like release of information where we might need permission to talk to another health professional that's also working with our client. Things like a third-party payment agreement or a reduced fee agreement. Lots of people just have a reduced fee program, but I haven't really thought it through. Don't make an agreement um, and don't revisit it. Don't revisit like the, the pricing on a regular basis. So things like that. Um, but one of the, this is quite a simple um, error that often we make, because I was really confused about this at the beginning, is not knowing the difference between a website privacy policy and a private practice privacy policy. So if you have a, a privacy policy on your website that pertains to activity on your website, not your private practice, and we should have a separate privacy policy for GDPR for our private practice and how we store, collect and destroy data. So can you walk us through some of the key documents that you have in your paperwork pack? Yeah, maybe I'll tell you about some of the ones that... Um, we often don't think about necessarily. So we all know about the therapy contract and I think, or therapy agreement, some people might like to call it. Um, and I think that there are sometimes sections of that that need to get added the longer we're in practice. So um, if you work in person or if you work online or if you work outdoors, if you have a hybrid practice, um, if you work on the telephone, then you're likely going to need different clauses and add things but there are different bits that might need to be added over time um, or you can just start with a template and have them all in there from the beginning and those things that um those things that are missing that are really essential are the confidentiality section the exceptions section and things like when do you do your fee um revisal letting people know I revise my fee every January for existing clients. It goes up every April, something like that. Letting people know in advance, uh, sending out, um, sending out practice updates is so letting people know I will send you a practice update, you know, um, at the end of the year, or I will let you know about holidays. As soon as I know, I will try to give you this much notice. So just things like that, that we don't always think about putting in a contract. It's sort of just giving our clients um, a safety, a framework. And then the things that I find really essential um, that I think we do think about but don't necessarily know exist are the intake assessment and safety, um, a safety form or a safety, a safety exercise to go through and it used to be, I think, in the olden days, people would often call it a safety contract. We don't contract people to safety anymore. But um, working through an exercise, especially when you're working with people who are, who you feel are slightly higher risk, um, who might be self-harming, who you're worried about and going through an exercise and, and putting that in place. So, you know, 
um, I think having that inside your toolbox is really important. You know, it's funny, I've had therapy with probably six therapists and I've never had any paperwork. I've never had any paperwork. I've no. had therapy. I've been in therapy since I was 15 years old and no therapist has ever given me any paperwork. Yeah, I always found like, I never really thought about it until obviously I started working with therapists. And the first therapist I ever worked with, my first client who I still work with, she had paperwork. And I was like, oh, are you supposed to have this? And she was like, well, yes. I think that might be from where they started working, you know, in hospitals and, send, you know, clinics and stuff like that. That yeah. was the norm of having intake paperwork. And maybe people that haven't worked in those settings don't know that they should have paperwork. So I think that could also be... Uh, you know a mistake or a common oversight of is actually how important it is to have this paperwork in place with your clients absolutely I mean because I've worked in exactly that kind of setting I've worked in hospitals I've worked in an aftercare I've been a manager of an aftercare and because I've worked you know with with clients who are high risk I think um it was really obvious to me that I needed that in in a uh, private practice um, but I think once you've been in a few risky situations, it also um, helps us to feel more secure because in private practice, we are alone. We are out there just floating. We haven't got the infrastructure of an agency or a hospital or an institution um, that will support us. And a lot of the times our insurance doesn't even really fully understand. Um, and so we have to take responsibility for that ourselves. Now that's, I think that's really tricky um you know emotionally it's kind of fine until it isn't fine you know um and and I always whenever you know I tell people what I do or people ask me they will say oh yeah that would have been really helpful if I'd had my cancellation policy in writing so that I could have referred to that because I forgot after three years of therapy what it was or you know it would have been really helpful if I'd known this this and this um, and I think whether you have a 10 page contract or you have a one page information um, for, you know, an info infographic for your clients, it's still really helpful to give people like a visual reference point. Yeah. And also it's just professional as well, right? It's a professional way to start a relationship with somebody as well. So, you know, there is that too. Absolutely. So what would you say the importance of informed consent is within the paperwork so it's really interesting in the in the us um the therapy contract what we call the therapy contract is actually called informed consent so the document itself is called informed consent whereas in you know in in my paperwork i call it a therapy contract or a therapy agreement and then at the end you know before i ask for a signature it says i give my informed consent and i think you know, for people who don't really understand what that means, it means giving consent with all of the information. You understand all of the information. And too much of the time, I think, we create policies or we copy other people's policies and we haven't really thought through, like, why? And so we don't discuss them. So there's loads of people who say what their cancellation policy is or they won't say what it is or they'll put it in writing and not discuss it same with fees, same with holidays, some, same with, you know, if a client wants every other week session. There's loads of things like that. We haven't really thought about why. And so informed consent for me is about um, me as a therapist being really thoughtful about my policies and fully understanding where they come from, offering that to somebody and then fully understanding the process and what I'm offering and then it's suiting them. And there's a lot of things that I check before working with someone and I refer more people than I take on. I always have because at some st the the goal is not to get as many clients in the door. The goal is for me to match somebody with someone that fits their needs so they have a good experience of therapy. Yeah, you've always said that from the day I started working with you, even when you were still kind of growing your practice and things like that at that time, it was always like, I'm not just taking somebody on for the sake of it. I always want to find the right therapist. And I think it even says that on your website, doesn't it? I think so. it's like li like my tagline. It, it Literally, like the first statement on my website is like, you, you, like, you can contact me and ask for another therapist. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you've okay. always definitely been like that. So 
what would you say to a therapist who's feeling super overwhelmed about their paperwork or getting started? Um, you know, whether they have the budget to be able to buy your paperwork or not as well. So like, what, how would you say to get started with it? I think a really good way to get started is to have a community of people that you can check out your policies with. So that could be like a professional community. It could be like a membership, like goal getters. It could be, um, it could be a coaching group with other therapists. Like I've got one called pod. Um, it could be, I don't know why I'm saying that as if there's space, there's no space. <laughs> like, I haven't got any space, but you know, finding a space could be in a Facebook group. It could be you start your own little local group and go out for coffee with people. I think a really good first step is going through your policies and deciding what your boundaries are professionally. I think there are lots of stages to paperwork and remembering that it is a sort of a living process and we're never really done. We always need to review things. We always, because our practice changes. You know, I used to work in the evenings. I don't work in the evenings anymore. Um, now I work at the weekend. I did that at the beginning as well. I worked at the weekend and then at some point I cut out weekends. And so that means that things have changed. Who I work with has changed, the time I'm available, all of that kind of stuff. And so I think just being easy with yourself and knowing that there's a process around it, um, but also asking for help. So getting feedback. I don't mean going into groups and saying, can someone give me your contract? And then just using that because that that isn't thinking about your policies. So reading through the ethical guidelines, print them out and underline stuff if you want to, but actually putting aside some time, I think even if you feel a bit overwhelmed, just starting with the welcome letter, start with the contact details form, think about the therapy agreement, the therapy contract. I think those are kind of the most important things. And buy a template for the GDPR privacy policy. There is no reason for anyone to struggle through reading data protection regulations when there are so many templates out there for that. Awesome. And also, I've just done a mini kind of training series called the Private Practice Workflow. And that goes through the whole of the client journey from inquiry to offboarding. So going through like that course, for example, can help you pick out your policies as well, because we talk about all of the things that the client kind of touches within your practice. And so each one of those can um, create a policy for you, like your cancellation policy and how you book and how you book in and all that kind of stuff. It, it could be a good start. I'm not saying it covers everything. It's definitely not 500 pages of the BACP website, but it is a good start to get your, like what you, what you said, your boundaries and your policies. So that's a good thing. Like finding someone that you like and watching their YouTube videos or, you know, going in a Facebook group and watching whatever lives they've done. I've done loads of that and just kind of hunting for, um information and feedback and listening to it while you go on a walk is a really is a really good idea but I think going through that process of like we, we you know like we don't really tend to call it that in therapy like onboarding and offboarding but that is what it is it's like welcoming someone into your practice and like one of the things that people often forget to do is a closing letter a graduation letter or a, a discharge letter some people call it and people forget to do that but actually we need to close up the file therapeutically as well as um, administratively. And so just going through that process and understanding the things that we need to put in place is, is really helpful. You know, maybe just going through a list of like, okay, these are the things that I want to create at the beginning of my practice. I've got a document checklist on private practice paperwork. There's a document checklist that people can go through. Okay, I definitely need this. I need this. I need this. Something really simple like that. Yeah, I love that. And I learned about this graduation. I've never seen that before um, with any of my clients. You were the first one to write a graduation kind of report, which I thought was like a really nice way to kind of end therapy. Yeah, it is. It's really nice, especially like sometimes because I do it with the client in the final session. And so then that means that they have something to take away. They've got some, you know, suggestions of books that they could read and, you know, stuff like that. And even if I haven't done an ending with someone and they've kind of disappeared or moved on or whatever, I still send something. Um, and yeah, I think that's I think the ending is kind of one of the most important parts of therapy. I love that.
So if people did want to buy your paperwork, how do you make it customizable for all different types of therapists, regardless of their speciality or modality or anything like that? Well, I sell it in Word, in Microsoft Word. So that means that you can change the spelling from UK English, British English to American English. And I highlight all the bits where people can edit different policies. So it'll be like highlighted in, in green. For example, let's say you wanted your cancellation policy to be 48 hours, then um, I've put uh, my cancellation policy is x hours and then you can just put that in and so people know when they edit it there's a video on the website and people you know you can see it's really simple you just kind of put in your policy um and then and then just unhighlight it and move on to the next bit so the way that i've done that is just to make it as simple as possible is basically to put everything in green that people need to make a decision about themselves and everything else can stay as it is Love that. And do you have any free resources that therapists can have to help them dot their I's and cross their T's? I do. I actually have one that's called dot your I's and cross your T's. <laughs> Good research. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. I've got a document uh, checklist where people can go through and see, you know, what they're looking for. Um, and And people can also, I think you know just have a look at the website because for example if you go to the therapy contract page i list all the headings in there so people can just go there and write okay well i need i need to cover all of these points and then you can write it yourself or you can look stuff up so you know there's there's on the internet there are free things amongst paid resources as well yeah but the, the benefit of the paid one is that it's all done for you. It's all there. Yeah. You just need to input your specific information rather than doing hours and hours of research, which is exactly what you're saving people is time. So it depends on if you're, you know, have got time or you've got money to spend really, really. And if you don't have the money to spend, then you have to have time to spend because otherwise you can't, you know, access things without research. So yes, we'll exactly. Although when we start our private practice, we often don't really have a lot of resource. We don't have a lot of money. Um, and so I do, un I do understand that. That's why there are free resources. And that's why amazing things like your YouTube channel that walk people through all the different stages are really important. And part of the pricing, I think it can look a bit inaccessible. And I think the investment of um, paperwork is something that lasts for an entire career. So we have to amortize that over the entire career. And what I tried to do was um, consider the amount of time that it would save people. And I think my estimation is that it would take about 40 hours of research and writing to put together a paperwork pack. It put, took me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more, obviously. Um, and obviously, I paid researchers and lawyers and things like that. Um, but I think it would take about 40, maybe a bit more. And so my pricing is around um, 10 hours of um, the national average of practice, private practice income, which is 50. I think it's gone up to 60 pounds, but let's say 50 pounds per session. And so I priced it based on um, 10 hours of work that I'd be saving you, even though it would take at least four or five times more than that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Thank you so much for joining me and talking to me about paperwork. There's literally nobody else on the planet that would talk about paperwork with such enthusiasm and love. <laughs> so you are definitely the right person to speak to about paperwork, to learn from, and also to get the resource from. So I really hope that everybody watching this goes and checks out. I'll put all the links to the free resource, the website, and also the um, clinical wheels training as well in the description below. So you can check all of those things out. And also just reach out to us as well. You're happy for people to reach out, right, about paperwork and things like that. So Oh, yes, please. And I think you were thinking about doing uh, a mega session. So you were thinking about doing a mega session soon for people who are buying the private practice paperwork are you yes. doing that one? yes i haven't got a date for it yet in the spring to celebrate the sun and the daffodils we'll definitely yeah i'd love to spend a saturday indoors talking about paperwork with everybody yeah sure i haven't got a date for it yet but yes
Awesome. So I will let everybody know about that as and when it comes up as well. So thank you again for joining me and I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much for having me. And also that felt very short and I feel like I could talk about it for at least another two hours. So hopefully we'll get to talk about it again sometime. Love to. Bye. So I really hope you found that interview useful. And if you're looking to get your paperwork up to scratch this year, I cannot recommend Tamara's paperwork pack highly enough. A lot of my initial clients for my VA business came from Tamara. So they went through her Learn to Love online therapy course. And then the next step was to get all of their practice systems in place. So they came to me. So they all had her paperwork pack. And it's been so useful to be able to understand somebody's practice just by reading the paperwork. And it's so useful for clients as well. So as I said, everything will be linked below. Please check out the description. And until next time, thanks for watching.